today's video, gents, we're paying our respects to the late Sir Sean Connery by laying out the style secrets you can steal from his most iconic character, James Bond. Now, in case you don't know, in 1963, Sean Connery was the first actor to play 007 on the big screen in the movie Dr. No. Now, starting the series off, he was a relatively unknown Scottish actor, but six James Bond films later, he was a worldwide star. And to this day, he's still considered by many to be the actor who played this iconic character best. So with that being said, the first style lesson you can steal from Sean Connery's James Bond, make sure you nail the fit and be comfortable in your clothing. So legend has it that the director, Terrence Young, who directed Dr. No, Thunderball, and From Russia With Love, told Sean Connery, you need to sleep in your suits. Seriously, you need to get used to wearing these. They need to fit you like a glove and they need to feel like a second skin. Now, I'm not sure that Sean Connery actually did this, but the point being, you want to practice wearing your clothing so that you wear it and it doesn't wear you. So many guys out there saying, you know what? When I put on a suit, it's uncomfortable. It's not that it's uncomfortable. It's that it's unfamiliar. And if it is uncomfortable, it needs to fit you properly. Early on, James Bond, played by Sean Connery, was very clear. Hey, I get my stuff made on Salville Row. I'm getting this tailored to fit me. In fact, if you look at the fit of his clothing, it was spot on for the time period. We had a very pronounced chest. It was built up. We definitely, you know, it was a structured jacket. When you look at Sean Connery playing James Bond, this guy just looked masculine. He looked strong because the chest was built up. The jacket looked like a suit of armor. And I've said it once and I'll say it again, guys. When you wear a jacket that fits you properly, whether it's a leather jacket, sports jacket, blazer jacket, suit jacket, doesn't matter. Any jacket that builds up the shoulders, draws attention to the hands, make them, makes them look a little bit larger, slims up the waist area, makes you look taller. All these things right here just simply make you look better. The next style secret to steal from James Bond, bring in the three-piece suit. I'm talking about the vest. Whether you go single-breasted or double-breasted, a vest can really complete a look. And here's the great thing with a vest is you don't have to go with a matching color with your suit, with your jacket or your trousers. You can go with a contrasting color. You want to have things that you can layer, things that you can have to really add a bit of just something different to your style. Now, I know James Bond at the time, Sean Connery, 1960s, 1970s, three-piece suits were actually going out. So, when he wore this, it really separated them from the crowd. What I really like about this as well is it gives you options. So, you want to peel off that jacket, a little bit too hot, a little bit too warm there in the office. You still have a really nice uniform look. If you got a little bit of weight in the midsection, it's going to do a good job of hiding it. At the same time, a vest just really completes the look versus just going with a shirt. The next style secret to steal from Sean Connery's James Bond, pay attention to the details, in particular, your pocket square. So, when you look at Sean Connery, what is he normally wearing when he plays James Bond? The presidential fold. This isn't something in your face. It's not over the top. It's a very clean look. And if you're just starting to wear suits, sports jackets, blazers, this is the first fold that I would recommend. Go with a solid cotton or linen pocket square, fold it, get it right in there, you're going to forget about it until somebody gives you a compliment and say, wow, you look really good. I don't know what it is because it's those small details. A jacket's not complete if it doesn't have that pocket filled. Now, up to this point, all of Sean Connery's lessons are very much with classic style, but he also wasn't afraid to have some fun. So, let's look at his cocktail cuff. If you're not familiar with this cuff, it's a mix between a French cuff and a regular barrel cuff. It's not really one of each. It's just something that stood out. And if you look at him when he's in various movies, he loved this cocktail cuff. And I like it as well because it really just set his bond apart. You could tell he was getting his shirts custom made. And this was something right here I really liked about his character. For me, what a great ways to bring in just something unique. Well, look at this shirt right here. I've got a contrasting fabric underneath. So, if I really wanted to have fun, go for a little bit more casual of a look, I could do something like this with one of my jackets. Probably not this ensemble, but I think you guys get the point. If I were to open up the shirt right here, you can see I have that contrasting look. Don't be afraid to have fun with your style. Sean Connery did. He made it work in James Bond and you can find a way to make it work just in your style. Maybe you want to bring in Star Wars cufflinks. Maybe you want to have fun with a watch. Maybe not go with something traditional, but go with something a little bit broader. Point being is have fun with your style and don't be afraid to maybe change something up here or there. The next style secret to steal from Sean Connery's James Bond, the man knew how to wear a robe. Seriously, in five out of his seven movies, he found a way to get into a robe to show, hey, James Bond can be casual, can be laid back. From his navy silk robe in Thunderball to his Japanese yukata 
in You Only Live Twice, James Bond knew how to dress ultra casual. And by the way, I'm genuinely curious. So, let me know down in the comments, do you guys own and wear robes? Me personally, I just haven't been a robe guy for a long time. But after doing this research and seeing how he rocked the robe in so many movies, yeah, Sean Connery has inspired me to go out there and get a robe and maybe even do a video on him. So, if you want to see that video, let me know your opinions down in the comments. The next style secret to steal from Sean Connery's James Bond, don't be afraid to wear, own and use a really nice watch. So, he had a Rolex Submariner 6538. That's now a rare watch. It's going to be expensive. And do you even need to go with a Rolex uh, Submariner? I mean, they're nice watches, but maybe you want to go with the original James Bond watch, the Rolex Explorer. That right there, if you go back and you read in Fleming's novels, you know, it's going to mean something. But I recommend you find a watch that has meaning to you. An example, this Ocean King made by Monta Watches out of St. Louis. The founder, Justin, is a friend of mine. I love what he's doing. I wanted to support him. Wanted to pick up a few watches made by micro brands. I really like this one. It's using Swiss parts, really high quality and I think at an affordable price for what you get. Another example of a watch that means a lot to me, this Yama Superman. I picked it up over in Mauritius, actually had a few people from my team come out. My son went with me. We went diving off the coast of Mauritius, had a great time. And guess who? I mean, the owners of Yama presented this to us as big, you know, we were founders of their Kickstarter. This watch has a story, and that's what I highly recommend. Maybe get a watch to commemorate something. Give a watch to commemorate something. I know some of you guys are saying, come on, Antonio, why would I spend all that money on a watch when I can get the latest and greatest smartphone? Which are tells me the time actually more accurately than any watch out there. True, but this thing will be in a landfill unfortunately here in a few years. This will be on your wrist or will be passed down. It's an heirloom. It's not about telling the time. When you start to wear watches, you get into this stuff, you understand it's about your relationship with time. Now, gents, if you're enjoying this video, but you're like, come on, Antonio, it's way too short. I want more. This could have been twice as long. You're exactly right because see, these videos are based off of detailed articles that we write over at our website, realmenrealstyle.com. So, if you want to go check out the full article, you definitely want to go check out the links down in the description. Now, this next style secret to steal is more particular about Sir Sean Connery and that is real men wear kilts. Seriously, Sean Connery loved his kilt. He was Scottish. He understood that, hey, it's important to embrace who you are and he had no problem going to a black tie event wearing his kilt, but he understood, hey, I can bend that, I can adjust it to suit my background. And I'm curious with you, what is your background? I know for me, my father comes from Guanajuato, Mexico, and it's been something I really enjoy bringing sometimes more color into my wardrobe, finding ways, okay, look at the Guayabera. Any of you guys from Cuba, any of you guys from parts of South America where the Guayabera is considered just as formal as a suit. How can you find a way, if you're Indian, if you're from Bangladesh, you're from Pakistan, finding a way to bring your traditional dress into your day to day wear? Now, after all this, is Sean Connery the best dressed James Bond ever? Well, guys, find out in this video right here where I take all the guys that have played James Bond and I break it out from worst to best. Who actually was the worst and the best dressed James Bond in order? Find out who they are, guys, by clicking on this video right here.